What's up, guys? Welcome to Steph Sells Homes Podcast. Welcome to episode 13. I'm honored to be here with one of my good friends, Joseph at Neo Builders. He's doing amazing things in the ADU space. And as you guys know, week by week, I try to bring new concepts, new experts in the space. Uh, everything related to real estate, right? All things real estate, all things ADU, all things mindset, all things entrepreneurship. So I'm super pumped and excited to you know have Joseph here today. So Joseph, can you tell them who's Joseph at Neo Builders? And let's let's start there. And and honestly, thank you for your time. He's a super busy contractor, entrepreneur. So trying to get him on here, you guys, was like legit uh oh, you know, a thing on its own. But we'll talk about that later. So Th welcome Joseph. Joseph. Thank you, Stephanie. Really, really beautiful intro. Um I am just a contractor. I mean, I built my first ADU in 2017. I lived in an ADU garage conversion and I still live in an ADU garage conversion. It's a different one. I started kind of my journey uh, living in a, in a unpermitted ADU. Um, and we kind of just, you know, moved with the laws. We followed the laws. We got a compliance letter uh, to our family home. We fixed up that ADU. And that was kind of the start of the ADU game for us. Um, I come from a long lineage of contractors. My dad's a contractor. My uncle's a contractor. My cousins are contractors. My brother, who I work with on Neo Builders, he's a contractor. Um, so I think I was bred to be either an architect or a contractor. And... Um, and yeah, today we are building ADUs with Neo Builders. I am designing ADUs um, and other homes with Neo Design, and I kind of put my main focus on design and project managing of the construction of the ADUs. Uh, we have a bunch of projects going on right now, um, anywhere from Culver City and Inglewood, uh, down in the Valley in Los Angeles, um, in the San Fernando Valley, and even some places in the St. Gabriel. Uh, my two main crews are on the 10 freeway and the 101 freeway. So I'm basically up and down the 405 all day. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at at this point. I love it. I love it. And everything that you're doing, I mean, I love the self-branding that you've you've been able to do. I love your systems and processes. And trying to find a good GC in this type of market or even in this time around, it's difficult, right? And which is one of the reasons why I tapped into the whole ADU space was trying to find a network of individuals who are professionals in their space that could help both my clients and myself and potential investors, right? And well, I love the aesthetics that you have to your brand, like everything's on point. So I, I, that's one of the things that I respected about you the most. The second thing that I respected about you the most was when, it, we, when I reached out to you and had a few clients, you made it very clear like, hey, I only work this specific hyper local area, which is another thing that I think a lot of GCs and realtors, to be honest, should focus on. Many times we think we want to sell to everybody, but that's not always the best strategy. So what you're doing, you know, in Culver City is awesome. And I've gotten to see some of your projects. I've been to some of your open houses. Super dope. I mean, again, I, you're, you, what, you're killing it and what you're doing. Because I, I deal with a lot of clients. I deal with a lot of people who hit me up on the back channels, on the DMs, saying horrible experiences and horror stories when working with GCs. So you're paving that wave of the good, the good ones out there, right? The few that we have. So kind of pivoting here uh, conversations, I also want to talk about ADU Insider. I mean, when I met you, I had no clue about this whole ADU Insider extension of your business, which I think is an amazing blog. Uh, but now that I'm part of it, I mean, I'm super stoked. So tell us, what do you have going on there? What's, what's ADU Insider all about? Yeah, so a couple things that you brought up. You brought about local contractors, local real estate agents, and local... Um, just local services, right? So, you know, Neo Builders is not the biggest construction company nor the biggest architectural firm. Um, we stay local. So like I say, we stay on the 10, we stay on the 101, we stay on the 405, we're LA based. The reason why we can do such a good job is because we are local. And um, I think GCs in general and real estate agents, like you say, uh, uh, subs and all services should be local, you know, 
being the best roofer in your neighborhood, you're gonna make a lot more money, you're gonna make a lot more leads and a lot more referrals compared to if you're the number 10 roofer you know, in a big city. So I, I try to make sure that I'm local, I like specific cities like Culver City because I feel like I've mastered them. And you bring up ADU Insider. So ADU Insider is basically a local directory and a local marketplace for contractors, for architects, for interior designers, for real estate agents. Now it happens to be for ADUs, but it's important that it's local. So the number one fact that we're trying to find is local services. And look, ADU's, ADU Insider is a really good place to find local people. The main thing that I would tell homeowners is to look for people in your city. The people that know the permits in your city, in specific cities, and especially in small cities. But in your specific city, contractors that have done projects like yours in your area. And I really believe that if a contractor doesn't live within 10 miles away from the project maybe 15 miles away from the project, it's gonna be really hard for him to manage that project. Um, so just make sure when hiring an architect, when hiring an interior designer, a contractor, someone who's gonna be at your house multiple times, that they live very close. And I think that's what ADU Insider is about. ADU Insider is also about giving a platform for smaller uh, content creators and for smaller contractors, architects, and specialists. Um, you know, Yelp costs a lot of money. Google ads cost a lot of money and kind of just for the the middle tier specialist that doesn't have all day to do content. Um, this is a good starting place. You go there, you write a blog, you know, we'll interview you and we'll write a blog for you. We'll come out and we'll take some pictures for you. We'll post it on the ADU Insider website. And from there, you know, you're getting a lot of eyeballs on your company. So I suggest any small contractors, any small real estate agents, any architects that want a little bit more jobs, you don't have to be small, but you want a little bit more jobs, a little bit more, you know, a place to show who you are and what you're doing and you're looking for local leads, this is a really good place to be. I love it. I mean, you know, I've been heavy on the whole ADU insider awareness ever since I became part of the network. I was like, blown away you know with all the work that i've seen that you've put into it it's it's a great platform and i see it as being like the local uber or lyft for the whole adu space right the fact that you can tap in and get connected with gcs uh, interior designers um structural engineers i mean you name it right you're building a, a, a you're curating a space and a network for realtors like one of the reasons why I tapped into the whole ADU thing, and you've seen me throughout the years putting time and energy and effort into learning about it is because I didn't know anything about it. And I don't think a lot of realtors do. I get a lot of realtors who don't even know what an ADU is. I just had one DM me this morning after I did my ADU webinar. She said, let me know what, when you're doing the next one because I don't even know what an ADU is. So that, you know, that's the importance of this whole ADU insider network is specifically for these uh, realtors because to be honest I was talking to a developer earlier and he said what do you think we can what software or what strategy can we build to tap into these local neighborhoods and talk to these homeowners and show them the ADU strategy and I said well realtors realtors are boots on the ground every single day talking to business owners talking to sellers talking to potential buyers talking to investors but we don't even understand the process and so I think that's where it starts so highly highly suggest that you guys check out adu insider so thank you for breaking that down for us uh one of the other things i wanted to ask you're out on the field every single day right on uh, doing these adu projects managing teams managing expectations managing homeowners i gotta say like it's you make it seem like it's fun right just like i make it seem on instagram they get to see the 10 percent, but they don't see the 90 percent work and grit that you need on the back end so what are some of those, um, let's go with the three benefits, right? What are the benefits of actually building? You know, why are we doing all everything that we're doing? Why are we creating so much awareness around it? Look, benefits of building an ADU are huge. I think the first thing that everyone needs to talk about is the housing. Um, housing is really, really important in California and we're seeing ADUs kind of move from California and Washington and Oregon all the way throughout uh, America. Housing is really important you know, the, the HCD just came out with, uh, 
new housing elements that says that we have to do 2.5 million homes in the next eight years between 2030. And it just shows how many housing units we need. So I think ADUs are going to be really good um, for housing, not Section 8 homes or not the homeless. A lot of people talk about that, but just getting more units out there. So I think that's number one. If our homeowners can make money with their garages, that's even better. So the rents that we're seeing from ADUs are very high. Now, a lot of people are price gouging because of the housing market. I don't like that. But, you know, if you're on par right under a luxury one bedroom, one bathroom in your garage and you give them, you know, beautiful brand new construction with an outdoor space, that's something that's really, really nice. So I think the renting is going to be nice. Um, a lot of people talk about the space. So currently we're building six ADUs and three of them are going to be rentals, but three of them are on homes that are basically worth over 1.5. I think one of the units, one of the single family homes that we're building on is 1.5. One of them is 1.8 and one is a two and a half million dollar house. Now, you know, people kind of freak out when I say I'm building a house, an ADU on a, on a two and a half million dollar house, but ADUs are also like fun spaces. You know, the recreational room is out. We're not doing any more recreational spaces. Uh, we're doing ADUs. They have to have a kitchen. They have to have a bathroom. But, you know, they're right by the pool where you're putting big TVs. We're putting surround sound systems. We're putting fireplaces in the back. So ADU new construction can be for rent, but it can also be for space. So it really depends on your budget. I think another big benefit is helping, you know, from a real estate perspective, helping homeowners that really can't afford a house they're now able to buy a house. And that's a big way that I got into ADUs. I mean, in 2019, I think you know my story, but in 2019, I bought a single family home for $750,000 and I really could not afford the house. Um, thank God I bought it at the right time, but um, basically I had a single family home, three bedroom, two bathroom. I bought it for 750. I did a garage conversion, ADU, I built on top of the garage and I eventually uh, turned it into a JADU. I live on top of the garage. The garage is an ADU that's long-term rental, $1,800. And my main house, three bedroom, two bathroom is rented out for $4,500. Basically, they pay my whole rent plus $1,500 plus I get to live for free. So on this house, not only am I making equity, not only am I, I'm paying the mortgage and making equity, but I'm also living for free. So it's really house hacking and I get to make money. So I'm a big fan of the house hacking. I'm a big fan of the young people buying ADUs, building the ADUs for themselves, for their parents or for their kids and just having more space. Wow. That was a lot right there. Uh, man, you nailed it. It's, it's basically a lifestyle, right? It can, I was talking about this at the ADU webinar that I did earlier. Different ways, different motivations as to why people are building these ADUs you just brought three good points, right? Which is cash flow, different lifestyle, upgrading the lifestyle. And this can go for a $500,000 home or even in the million dollar market, right? I've seen it on both ends um, and people are getting very creative with the space. Now, have you seen any changes like with financing? How, how are people getting creative? For example, above that, let's say $800,000 threshold I'm assuming they're they're just paying for it cash or tapping into their equity. Yeah, look, most of the people that I don't usually deal with finance, that's the truth. I honestly find someone on ADU Insider and refer them the 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 refinance or, you know, helping broker the deal for finance. But I will tell you like this. If you have equity in your house, use the equity. It's so easy and after the project, you're probably gonna refinance and you're probably gonna make money on the project. Now, if you're a new homeowner and you have very little equity, what I really suggest to you is to just take a private loan, take a hard money loan, take a construction loan, build it as quick as possible, know exactly what you're building and then refinance later. I think it's, it's two perspectives. Either you have money and you're gonna pay, you're gonna do a refinance and, and you have the equity, or you don't, right. and which kind of means you can't afford the project, which just means build the right thing, don't overbuild, and get your cash out of the house as soon as you finish building. 
Yep, that's it right there. I mean, that's exactly what I tell homeowners. Uh, what I'm sitting with homeowners is tap into your equity, tap into your 401k, uh, do a cash out refi, consider a construction or renovation loan, or if um, if it's a buyer, like what you just brought up is key. You, you could barely afford, right, to buy that property. I'm having these same conversations with buyers. Hey, if you're looking at a home uh, for seven hundred thousand, let's consider going up to seven fifty because one, you're priced out. There's nothing under seven hundred, so let's consider looking at seven fifty. Now they're open to the idea of submitting a higher offer because they know they can generate some cash flow to help them offset their mortgage, and that's where it's at for me as a realtor because I'm not a project manager. I'm not a prop. I did property management. I'm not doing that anymore. You know, I'm not like behind these GCs and subcontractors. I'm simply bringing the awareness and telling you from A to B, connect with these people, right? And like this podcast today is dedicated to you. If anybody wants to uh, build or convert in Culver City, go talk to Joseph and go check out this episode, right? So I'm curating a space for people, like legit, that's what I'm doing, to help them overcome that fear mentality that, hey, you, you think you're priced out, but you're just looking at the property the wrong way. Now let's identify ADU potential, which is another thing that we share in common. You know, um, I saw your post earlier, how to identify ADU potential on a property. Like we're, we're already on the same level, aligned, looking at properties that way because we're in it day in, day out. The White House recently had a webinar. They talked about how between 2018 and 2020, there have been over 23,000 ADUs built in California. 34,000 of those permitted. And you've done some of those, you know, in those numbers. So I think it's just a matter of time before appraisers start taking them into consideration and we start looking at the income. That's going to happen and it'll be eventually become nationwide. You know, ADUs will will become nationwide eventually. But um, cool stuff, man. I want to also ask you another question. I noticed you started doing these ADU open houses. How did that come about? Um, I know that there's a huge buyer demand, but that was such a dope move. I mean, I started going to your ADU open houses, you know, and and uh, what's the feedback been on that? Yeah, so look, open houses are usually for sale of uh, the sell of a house. I don't call them ADU open houses anymore. I call them ADU expos. Um, and I think a big part of not doing an ADU is not knowing what you're going to get into. So when people walk into my ADUs, they get a kind of a breath of fresh air. I mean, we, we build really nice units. So they come in, they love the unit. They say, oh my God, this was a garage or oh my God, this is new construction. How much did it cost? They come with questions. Um, I stand behind all of my units. I really don't build units that I don't like. And I will even sometimes fight with my homeowner and say, no, no, no we need to do the bathroom like this. Um, so I do the open house because I'm happy to show people my work. I am proud of my work and because I'm proud of my work, I am, I want people to come in. You know, there's a lot of contractors, unfortunately, that build units and they don't finish and they take a long time and their homeowners don't like them. And for so many reasons, they don't even post pictures. I mean, I like to post pictures. I like to do it right, post pictures, post YouTube videos, invite the whole neighborhood. So if you stand behind your if you stand behind your work, you know, you should bring people to come see your work. Um I think it's good feedback. People really love it. You know, a lot of people message me like asking questions and I really try to help everyone. I do a free 15 minute consultation if anyone has a very specific question or want to go over their homes. But you know, people come with all sort of crazy things to these open houses. And it's also a good time to just meet my clients, to meet my fans, to meet the people that are building ADUs, to learn from them. So I like open houses. I, I enjoy them. Um, I hope to do more of them. I have two more coming up, one in Sherman Oaks and one in Culver City. I'm there. I, I, as many times as I can make it, I'll be there. And I love to see the work. I think it's genius to be able to help people envision what their unit would look like, what these finishes look like, and actually see it in person. Um, also get an idea and a feel for the size. I think sometimes people have this misconception that these spaces are super tiny and how are you going to make it work? But then once they see it, they're, 
you know, it's a whole different perspective. But again, it's seeing it and you do an amazing job. You'd be a killer agent because you're already doing the open houses. You got the systems down. <laughs> Dude, you're killer. But, but, but um, that brings yeah. me to the other thing. You say they're tiny <laughs> homes, but me and you met in a tiny home fest. And I want to I want to plug in tiny home fest. Uh, it's this weekend in San Diego. Yeah, remember we met we met right out right outside of Boxable. So well, I think Boxable is going to be there again. It's a fun little event, but look, Are you going? Are you going? I'm going to go. I'm going to go on Sunday. Hey, look, what I want to say is ADUs can be tiny homes, but they're not always tiny homes. So we see ADUs. The smallest ADU I've ever built is 270 square feet. It's tiny. Okay. Murphy bed, you know, six linear foot kitchen, tiny bathroom. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest ADU I've ever built was... 1196 square feet so that's basically a house their adus come in all shapes and sizes and rooftops not rooftops huge small you can build an adu any size you want exactly yeah same here the smallest i've seen is like 250 and they can go up to 1200 right in most cases and so when you think 1200 that's that's the size of a house here in la most most homes, at least here in Long Beach, they're 1950s, 60s built, and they're somewhere between 800 and 1100 square feet. That's a house. That's a three bedroom, one bath. That's a two bedroom, one bath. So, I mean, we can go on and on with this topic. We're super passionate about it, and I think what you're doing is amazing. So, um, I think you touched also on the other question that I was going to ask, which was, what are some of the misconceptions? But you kind of touched on some of those. I don't know if you have, if you want to bring up any others that you've seen, but quickly. I mean, look, the, don't overbuild. These are my rules. Don't overbuild or overdesign. And that just basically means that build for what you want and what you're going to use and what you're going to live in. A lot of people try to build for the renter, which I don't love. I like to build for the property. So we don't overbuild, right? If you have a nice garage and you wanted to do 500 square feet, I would tell you just keep the garage. If you wanted a two bedroom, two bathroom, or you had the size, then you can do it. But build what you, design what you can build and what you can afford. And the other thing is the second floor. I mean, I get countless times people want to do second floor. They want to keep their garage on the bottom and build a unit on top. And they have setback issues and they don't have the money for it. You have to be willing to give up your garage if you're going to do a garage conversion. Because if you're planning on keeping the garage and and building on top of it, number one, it's going to be very, very expensive. And number two... Can you break it down for them as to why it's expensive? Because I don't think people really hear that. I want to echo that. I get a lot of people who want to keep the integrity of the garage for parking, to be considerate of the neighbors, whatever the reason is. And it's like, okay, that's cool, right? You don't have to give up that option, but you have to be aware of the fact that it's going to cost you more because structurally, I mean, tell them. <laughs> New foundation. Let, let's start. Let's start. Literally, every single thing is more expensive. So if, if we have a detached garage, we basically have a shell. We have a roof. We usually have foundation and we have four walls, right? Maybe three walls of the garage door. When we're building on top of the garage, not only are we changing this the structure on the bottom but we're also creating a new structure on the top so from t from bottom to top is way deeper foundation way more sheer walls or strong walls on the existing garage which means we have to basically demo the whole wall gut the whole wall and put sheer walls or strong walls then the whole entire roof of the garage is gone because now we're building on top of it then for the new structure we have to reinforce the framing so new ceiling joists, new roof rafters, new everything for the middle space. Now we have to build new, uh, new walls on the second floor and then a new uh, uh, roof. So basically the whole structure is different. It's double the price. So if you, if you want a one bedroom, one bathroom and you already have a detached garage, just do the garage. You do not have to build on top of it because you're going to spend double the amount and you're going to get basically the same size square footage, sometimes less if you have setback issues. So don't overdesign, don't overbuild, build what you can and build what is already existing. 
ADUs are really special because they allow us to take existing structures and make them into dwelling spaces. You can take a storage space and make it into a dwelling space and it's something so beautiful and a lot of people are keeping their garage but building a new construction and don't understand that garages are not really worth it as much. I see new construction homes going for three and a half million dollars in LA and they don't have garages. It's crazy. Right? So. I know. That, that, those those are my misconceptions. Those are my tips. I love it. I love it. I think those were good ones. Super fire. And um, I'm actually gonna make a reel on that one because that was that was good. That was really good. Uh, people need to hear that. So how can people connect with you if they like what they heard? If they resonated with what you're doing? I love that you're tapping into the whole Cur Culver City market. The higher price point. Um, a lot of fascinating and good things happening. I saw this um, homeowner who has a 1.4 is building an ADU to have it as like a wellness center. You know, like, of course, it has its kitchen, its bedroom and its bathroom, but it's by the bed by the pool. So they're actually setting up like this whole like, you know, sound bath vibes, wellness vibes. So you're right. Like. It's different strokes for different folks, you know, different motivation behind it. But the beauty to it is that you can get creative with the um, strategy. So tell the people again where they can find you, where they can connect with you and book an appointment with you. Sure. If you're in the L.A., in the greater L.A. area, you can get me on Instagram. You can get me on my website. You can get me on YouTube. Um, those are the big ones for L.A. City. If you're not in LA City, I would suggest that you start with ADU Insider. There's a lot of good contractors there. We also have a Facebook page called ADU California ADU Contractors. And that's a really, really good place to kind of start asking questions. And there's a lot of real estate agents, a lot of homeowners, a lot of contractors basically just helping you. Um, those are the big places. I mean, I really try to get ADU Insider off the ground for places like San Diego, San Francisco. Right. I post a lot of content on my Instagram and my YouTube. I try to post a lot on Pinterest and Facebook. Um, we also do a lot of free 15-minute consultations. So right. if you just want to you know, talk to us and brainstorm about your project, ask a couple of questions, we do it all for free. Um, so you can definitely give us a call. I will link below. And I also have a PDF that people really like, the five five tips to making a great investment using an ADU. And I will also link that below. Um, Stephanie, tell us where we can find you. Man, I'm all over the place. I can't keep up. But um, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to get on your level. I'm on YouTube, Spotify, Buzzsprout. That's where I'm uploading these um, episodes to. And then I'm kind of repurposing this content, sharing it on my Instagram so people you know, if they don't have time to sit and watch the entire episode, at least we can, you know, highlight the conversation and bring more knowledge and more awareness around this whole ADU thing. Uh, so I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Clubhouse. I have my own Clubhouse room. It's called All Things ADU. I bring different experts on the field um, and I want to have you on there. I don't know if you're on Clubhouse, but we'll get you on Clubhouse as well. And yeah, guys, I mean, I'm super grateful that Joseph had the time to come here today because every single week I want to highlight different professionals in the space that you can go and vet and curate your own network and decide whether you want to work with them or not so before I let you go I got two random questions because this is going to be part of um, bloopers at the end of the year and I'm just going to do like a whole collage so I got two bonus questions for you and feel free to ask me any questions before we wrap up first one is what's your favorite restaurant or favorite food or dish I like a lot of fast food, so I am going to go probably, my favorite food, my favorite comfort food is for sure pizza, but my favorite food right now is uh, shawarma food trucks, and I know you come from Hispanic place, and I am a very Israeli Middle Eastern place, basically shawarma is just a very, very, very big pizza, and food truck, same food truck, same day, every single day on Burbank and Witset. I don't even know their name, honestly. It's that It's that good. It's that undercover. Oh, man. I love it. I think that's our connection there because we both come from, like, I come from Latino parents. You come from Middle Eastern. But there's so many similarities, you know, as far as culture behind it and the food and the vibes. And you already know what our five-year goal plan is. So I love Mexican food and Mediterranean food. 
<laughs> yeah, we're not we're not gonna say that, but um, but people, yeah, we'll we'll leave that for the next one. My second question is, um, what is your travel go to place? Like, what's your favorite spot? Sure. To, go travel, to go travel and vacation, and vacation for, a week, for a week or two weeks. Sure, I am going to Hawaii for seven days uh, in May. I rarely go on vacation, so this is a very, very big one. I haven't been on vacation in two years. Um, I go to the homeland of Israel uh, fairly often. I live there, but my go-to vacation place, been there twice, would be the Philippines. I really, really love Southeast Asia. They speak amazing English. The beaches are fantastic. Things are very cheap there, and it's just a place that you can relax. It's it's amazing. So those three are the big ones. You know what? My, my neighbors have told me. I have my both of my neighbors are Filipino, and I grew up around Filipinos in West Long Beach. There's a huge Filipino community, um, and they've told me like Manila you know, different parts, and they've told me how inexpensive it is to live there as well, so I thought that was pretty cool, but, um, all right, well, I really got to say thank you again, Joseph, for your time, it's been an awesome 30 minutes, look, I told you, I was, I'm on point, 30 minutes of your time, thank you again, and, um, I'll go ahead and pin the link, all his information, guys, feel free to tap in with Joseph, check out his YouTube channel, check out those ADU open houses. That's a great way to tap into it. If you guys are having thoughts of investing or figuring out whether you want to build or not, watch his videos and then you decide. All right, guys. Steph, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.